solar panels like this are a common sight on rooftops. But what if you don't have a rooftop that's big enough? Or you are renting? Or you have a rooftop but you don't want to commit to a long-term sort of plan to stay right there? Can we get solar then? The answer is yes, we can. Today, I'm going to talk to the co-founders of a startup that is facilitating solar while still being flexible. Join me for the Climate Conversations. We at Rain Matter are learning about how climate change is affecting you and me. More importantly, what we can do about it. Join us as we speak with people who are working on solutions for India. Welcome to the Climate Conversations. Hi, I'm Hansi, and today we will meet the three co-founders of the startup Sunday Grids, Matthew Samuel, Nasir Satela, and Tarun Joseph, right here in the Rain Matter studio. I asked them about the problems they saw with rooftop solar. There are only two sets of cases that comes here. Number one, a lot of people who had that sort of financial wherewithal and climate awareness live in tier one cities. In tier one cities, essentially A, we live in multi-story buildings, or a lot of us essentially come into here, you know, we migrate inwards to the cities, right? And we live as tenants. In both those scenarios, you don't really have access to the roof space. And then uh, also there's a psychological aspect to it. And that is the fact that going solar is a 20, 25 year commitment. And only when you sort of price that in, you get a positive ROI. So essentially, then the question was like, are you ready to make that commitment for that long? Firstly, are you going to be in that space for that long? Right. That's the thing a lot of people are unsure about. Secondly, like now it's one more thing they have to manage. They have to clean those panels and maintain it. And essentially, in many ways, the solar tech itself is a black box. I mean, you know, they don't really understand what goes in and what comes out. The solution to these problems is community solar. Community solar involves installing solar panels in a shared location, such as a community space or a dedicated solar farm, usually close to the community. The electricity generated is shared amongst the subscribers who receive credits on their electricity bills based on the share of the solar power produced. This setup can be managed by utilities, developers, or community groups. In India, utilities have not taken up community solar. In what we are doing as community solar, and essentially the difference between you putting panels on a rooftop, a private rooftop solar, versus a community solar, is that instead of it being on your roof space, it's completely elsewhere, and you basically pool in together to basically build that out, right? Essentially what digital solar can do is like, hey, you know what, because it's a community solar, and you can stack up capacity later on, maybe you don't need a three kilowatt to begin with. Why don't you start with half a kilowatt or a kilowatt. And then slowly as you gain more confidence into how the model works, you can just keep, you know, reserving more capacity. <laughs> but just like how what we had uh, been able to do with, let's say, cloud storage or cloud compute, right? But it's no longer with you. You don't carry around your hard drives anymore, but rather you have the cloud and you put it in. Is it possible that we can use the internet as a distribution layer to connect all those pieces together? Oh, yeah, like Matthew mentioned earlier, like what we're trying to solve for is the accessibility side. How can we make uh, you know, people tap into this because we've identified that a lot of our customers are essentially uh, living in apartments. We install large scale solar plants on commercial buildings. Uh, these could be uh, malls, theaters, hospitals, or residential societies. And uh, we essentially, once we install these, this could be like a 100 kilowatt plant. Uh, once we do that, we essentially open it up for the serving for, for, for our residential users, so like any of us. So we can come to up sundagins.com. All you have to say is what is your power bill and how much do you want to save off it. Uh, because at the end of the day, solar has, uh, you know, you save on your power bills, right? So our platform will then tell you how much capacity you require of this plant. So let's say we have this 100 kilowatt plant, and maybe I require just 5 kilowatts. I'm essentially just going to be allotted that 5 kilowatts, and whatever energy is being produced through that, will be, uh, I'll get credits for that into my account. And with these credits, I can then save on my power bills. So Sunday Grids acts as a developer, but with a twist. It doesn't provide just community solar, but digital or virtual community solar. So like in community solar, residential users reserve capacity in a solar farm. But instead of installing the solar farm in a local community, they install it on the roof of a commercial and industrial building, which could be far away from the residential users. 
They sell the electricity from the panels to these entities at a lower price than what they would have bought from a utility generating from a non-renewable source. One of the reasons why they opt for insulation from us is because, uh, let's say in a state like Maharashtra, where the commercial tariffs, they could range between maybe 12 to 15 rupees or 16 rupees. And what we do is we'll install a solar plant for them at no cost and probably charge them maybe five to six rupees. Um, and so essentially that delta is their savings and also they're not putting up any upfront capital, right? Uh, so essentially we, at the end of every month, we invoice them uh, for the power that's been uh, generated and consumed. And what we uh, then collect is then dispersed to our uh, digital solar users. The virtual part comes from the fact that residential users can trade not only with the solar farms and locations in other states, but also with other segments, which have different tariffs and a whole range of different policies related to minimum maximum load, transformer capacity, voltage connectivity, and how much users can export surplus energy. They also have different compensation policies. All of this is for Sunday Grids to figure out in the bag. Now, since all of these transactions need to go through the grid, we need to understand the concept of gross and net metering. Gross metering is an arrangement in which a prosumer is compensated at a fixed feed-in tariff for the total number of units solar energy generated and exported to the grid, usually accounted for by a unidirectional gross meter. As a consumer, she has to pay for the electricity to the distribution company at a retail supply tariff for the electricity consumed from the grid. So the feed-in tariff and the retail supply tariff are typically different rates. Net metering is an arrangement in which electricity exports are adjusted against the imports, such that the electricity produced is deducted from the total electricity consumed over a fixed period of time. So the bill is lower. The adjustment may be done either on a monthly, half-yearly or annual basis. Typically, a bi-directional net meter accounts for both import and export of power. If the exported electricity is higher than the imported electricity, a consumer may or may not be compensated for the excess electricity being fed into the grid, depending on the state's net metering policy. Now that we understand community, virtual, and metering, let's understand how all of this translates to savings. Uh, we just say that how many kilowatts has to be subscribed so that this particular person can offset 1,000 rupees of bill in a month. So it's not really necessary that we know how many units you're consuming, but rather how much is your electricity right. bill. Define reserve. Do they have to put money yes. into reserve? Yes, they have a one-time fee. And, and, that's and how much is that? Uh, that's nearly 55k per kilowatt. So it varies from project to project. project. 55,000 rupees per kilowatt. per kilowatt. So if they're doing a three kilowatt system, that's about 1,65,000. Here's some math guy. So Sunday Grids allows residential users to pay for the upfront capital cost of installing the solar panel on a commercial building. They can reserve it for a price of about 55,000 rupees per kilowatt right now. The commercial establishment pays for the electricity it consumes, which becomes credit against the residential users' electricity bills. So this is virtual community solar with the CNI sector. Now Sunday Grid's vision is much bigger. The credits will be used against any bill. So users can technically invest in solar energy as an investment and the returns can be higher than 10 to 11% tax free. I'm just gonna put in this and then analogy. Today we kind of run, like imagine you book my show, yeah. the, you know, you can book tickets mm -hmm. on the platform. We are also building the theaters right. to house this, this multiplexes as well. Our goal is essentially to just do that thing that we want to do, right? And essentially open it up for other folks. Now, you see uh, a bunch of correlatory auxiliary things kind of pop up the moment you start doing it. 
because you're not plugging in different financiers, you're plugging in different developers, you're plugging in different projects, different hosts, and they have their own requirements, right? Because they have to get the power out and get invoicing and everything. And then there is our core user base, who is our users, and then they pay the electricity bills. And now we are like, okay, what else can we do with these credits, right? Um, depending on when you add, I probably think we will, people will soon be able to use these energy credits to pay for their charging infrastructure, public charging of their vehicles as well. Uh, sorry, I right, didn't right, right, speak. Yeah. So, so yeah. you can you have these credits yes. that you use right now to purely uh, pay for, let's say, electricity bills. What we are doing is we are opening up more venues for using these credits. We basically have two revenue streams. Uh, one is when someone comes and reserves, right? There's a piece over there. And then essentially, when we get a tariff, right? So there's two way tariffs. One, what we collect from the host, where we have installed the panels and they consume the power and what we pass on to the users. There's a delta over there that we capture. I was say, so your revenue model is basically this delta between the two. Yeah. Uh, the re reserving... Maybe we have some nearly 5% uh, margin. Upfront up up margins. margins. Uh, upfront margins. So you come in, you pay for 50, I mean, you pay 55K for a kilowatt, right. you're going to keep 5% of that as key. And then essentially on the power generated, essentially, let's say that is 6 rupees, we essentially pass on 5.5 rupees, etc. That delta is basically... We sort of want to build a marketplace where existing in, uh, power pro uh, producers can put up their projects and then there are buyers for that project. So that, that was our ultimate goal. Uh, but then like Matthew explained, you know, we need buyers, we need sellers. So which is where we came in and we thought, you know, the first few projects, let's put the capital from our own hands. And then uh, that's where when we raised our first round with Zeroda, uh, we sort of set up a pool of funds to... So was Rain Matter the only people you went to? Yes. We, we okay. raised a seed And how much did you raise? 2.8 crores. Yeah. Okay. So when we did that, what we did was we thought we'll spend about uh, one and a half crores towards the project, keep that as a rolling fund, where essentially, you know, you deploy the money into a project, set up the project, put that, on, put that project on our platform, get the money back. And then it's, it's essentially rolling. It's basically working capital. Yeah, working capital. So I, I think that's what we plan on doing. But uh, so this is sort of to prove that, you know, the model like this exists and also at the same time we can acquire users for this model. Uh, and then once that is done, we plan on bringing on existing power producers who have their own assets. So that way we don't have to deploy these funds every single time. So okay. in, in the long run, which of these two do you expect to grow? The second one, because we are going to open it up for other folks to come and put their projects, right? They're going to get more of that upfront keeps. We'll capture more of the what happened delta. delta yeah and that kind of compounds as well as you think more projects you add in the value that you get how are you going to reach more consumers are you ready for it yeah yeah so as, as we were mentioning as now we are at a stage where we are plugging in more in demand uh two, two things happen one those power providers themselves essentially think of as a shopify for energy right so you have your retailer who's basically putting up and we are essentially building the platform for them to host their projects now, hosting a project would mean you need to have real-time monitoring of the system. You need to know who reserved how much of the system. You need to build that entire billing infrastructure to, for them to make the electricity payments. And there's a whole different nuances that kind of come into it, right? So we take care of all of that aspects. And any of our power providers who is on our platform, they could come in and just put up their solar systems, plug it into the structure. We have an IoT-based uh, infrastructure in place that basically leads, reads, allows us to read the data, etc. And the users can get to see how much credits are created and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Long story short, what this essentially uh, leads to is essentially, we, I think we are looking to deploy nearly two megawatts of solar by middle of next quarter. Today, we are essentially building the tools, like a payment gateway, sure. more or less, right? Rather, the business advertises itself, mm -hmm. and then to basically make the transaction happen, you have to use the payment gateway. Mm -hmm. So position ourselves in that way, so that we don't directly now interface with customers. While we do build education around solar, yeah. we think that's more of a, it's a community good, as well as it just allows us to you know, build more trust in our brand. I hope you agree. It was very interesting to learn about how Sunday Grids is taking community solar and gross metering into the virtual space. Maybe we can leapfrog some steps by solving for India's unique issues. Thank you for learning with me as I have the climate conversations. I'm Hansi. See you next time.